Hello there geometry peeps. Today we have inscribed and circumscribed quadrilaterals. Now, a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles are supplementary. Now, that's the new theorem. But let's focus on this word for a minute. Inscribed. All right, inscribed means that it's drawn inside of a circle. So if we're talking about a quadrilateral, it means that it's inside of a circle and the vertices of the quadrilateral are hitting the circle. So something like that, any quadrilateral, it can be a parallelogram, a rectangle, any of the ones we studied. All right, so that's what inscribed means is it's drawn inside of a circle. All right, so now, when a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, there's a theorem that goes along with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it says that the opposite angles are supplementary. Now, what that means is angle A and angle C are supplementary. So angle A plus angle C equal 180 degrees and B and D. Angle B plus angle D equals 180 degrees. But let's explore this a little further. Okay, let's think about this. If I have a vertex on the circle, we know that it's half of the intercepted arc. So if I trace angle A here, it goes from here to here, which means it intercepts this entire arc. Right? Okay, you with me? Now let's look at angle C. Angle C extends here and here, so to this vertex and this vertex, and it intercepts this entire arc. So between where C intersects is all of this, and where A intersects, which is all of this, covers the entire circle. And we know if it's on the circle that it's half, and that's why that's 180, because half of 360 is 180. So all these circle theorems kind of go hand in hand, and it really makes sense when you look at it like that. Okay, So that's where our theorem ultimately comes from. And that's why this exists. But if you just know that there are opposite angles inside an inscribed quadrilateral or supplementary, that should be sufficient. All right. Now, along with this kind of comes another theorem, and it's if an inscribed angle, again, there's that word inscribed, if an inscribed angle of a circle intercepts a semicircle, then the angle is a right angle. Okay, now this is just one of those theorems that let's say we have a diameter. Okay, and if I have an angle on the circle that happens to intercept that diameter. Psh, psh, and we'll call that D. Alright, what it says is that this angle is always going to be 90 degrees. Again, that makes sense. It intercepts here and here which is half of a circle, it's on the circle, so it's half the measure of the intercepted arc. So our angle D would equal 90. So that's just a little side note about an inscribed angle. And please keep in mind, an inscribed quadrilateral, the opposite angles are supplementary. All right, so inscribed means inside of the circle. Now let's go to this next one. Okay, this says that if a quadrilateral is circumscribed, about a circle, then the sides of the quadrilateral are tangent to the circle. Tangent to the circle. And I don't know how to spell. Tangent to the circle. All right, now, this word circumscribed means that the quadrilateral is drawn outside of the circle. Okay, so the circle is actually inscribed in the quadrilateral. So it would look something like this. And this might take me a few tries to draw. So you might want to give me a second before you decide to draw it. Alright, so it could look something like that. Okay, the quadrilateral is drawn outside of the circle. Okay, now... Something because it's tangent, what it's saying is that it's tangent at each point of the circle. So if I call this point A, B, C, D. Alright, because we're tangent here and here, what that forces is these two 
are congruent because we know our tangent tangent theorem. So I'm going to call this little a and little a. So we know those two spots are congruent. The same thing happens with b over here now. We know this piece is congruent to this piece because they're both tangent to the same circle and they meet at a point outside. So I'm going to call this little b and little b. Now, I want to say that these two are congruent, but you have to be careful. These two are not congruent. Okay, this piece could potentially be longer. B could be like 12 and A could be 5. All right, again, that happens over here. Little c would be congruent to little c. And over here, D would be congruent to D. So when you have a quadrilateral circumscribed, okay, drawn outside of the circle, okay, you have it creates tangent lines to that circle and we know if two tangent lines to the same circle meet at a point outside of the circle they're congruent from our first part of the chapter so we know little a is congruent to little a little b is congruent to little b little c is congruent to little c and little d is congruent to little d so all those lengths are congruent all right so those are our three theorems let's do two examples and then we're done so the first one we're gonna say I want to know what the measure of angle R is. So find the measure of angle R. Find the measure of angle R. So our picture is going to look like this. And I'm going to go R O S E. And I'm going to tell you angle O is 8x plus 21 degrees. Angle S is 10x minus 1 degrees. And angle E is 7x minus 6 degrees. Now, looking at this problem here, I know I have an inscribed quadrilateral, so that means opposite angles are supplementary. So I would start by taking O plus E and setting it equal to 180. So I have 8x plus 21 plus 7x minus 6 is equal to 180 degrees. Combine your like terms, so 15x plus 15 equals 180. 15x equals, subtract that, 165. So x is 11. All right, now we need angle R and we don't know that yet. So what I would do is go find all the other angles. 8 times 11 is 88, plus 21 is 109. 7 times 11 is 77, minus 6, 71. If I substitute 11 in here, I get 109. So how do we find angle R? Well, just as these two angles are supplementary, so are R and S. So 180 minus 109 gives me 71 degrees, and that's my measure of angle R. All right, so we can do application problems kind of like that to uh, exemplify our theorems. All right, over here, I'm going to say solve for y. I'm going to give you a center. There's a diameter. I'm going to tell you also these two sides, or these chords are congruent. And I'm going to tell you this is... 4y minus 7. All right, so let's think about this. We have an angle intercepting a diameter, so I know I have a right angle, so that's 90, based on our theorem, and I have congruent legs. So if I have a 90 degree, a right triangle with congruent legs, I know this is a 45, 45, 90. This is pointing to the 45 degree angle. So 4y minus 7 is equal to 45 degrees. Add 7 to both sides. 4y is 52. Divide by 4. And y is 13. And that's all I got. See you later.